come first and foremost and give all praise and honor and glory to the most high God Yahweh. We do survive Shem Yahweh Shai. Right? It's the opposite of Quatazabala or opposite Q. Um, hey man, there's a lot of things that are going on this morning. Uh started on Friday, moved into um Sunday afternoon with some of the market futures. Uh, the Japanese, some of the Asian markets started opening up and they started crashing, right? So we're just going to get into uh, just some of the current events that are going on around the world right now. Um, you know, hit some hit some precepts and, uh, you know, just be able to, to do a little a little bit of measuring, measuring of the times, right? Um, so let's look, let's see here. Um, as a matter of fact, let's, let's do that, hit that first. Right. So second Ezra 9 and verse 1. He answered me then and said, Measure thou the time diligently in itself. And when you see part of the signs pass, which I have told thee before, then shalt thou understand that it is the very same time wherein the highest will begin to visit the world which he made. Right. So we got to measure the times. We should we should know and have a um, a good understanding of the time frame or the quote unquote season that we're in, right? We should have a, we should be able to see certain things happening, certain prophecies passed, certain prophecies have started, and we should be like, yo, we we write about this particular area, you know. Hey man, let's let's keep building up our faith, you know. Uh, shoot, if you if you buy buy yourself a little food, a little water, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, just understand that that food and water is not what's going to be your salvation, right? You having faith in the most high, having faith in the sun and keeping the commandments is what's going to allow um, the spirit to move with inside of you and your family, your household uh, to be saved from, from these, <clears throat> from these perils in the days that are, are to come, right? So we got to measure the times. We're going to come back to second answers later, but let's just go ahead and, uh, Get into some of these articles. Let's listen to this real quick. Right. So the lady came out. She said, "History in the making." The guy was like, "Oh, don't you know? I don't know if you want to say history in the making." She's like, "No, this is history in the making. We've never been a thousand points down." on the NASDAQ composite ever, right? So, you know, this crash as of right now is a is literally a historic crash, right? It is a historic crash <clears throat> um, and it's all been formulated and put together by the most high because we understand that a, a market crash was going to have to happen. And this is not the totality of it. I think that this, this really is the catalyst for the rest of the crash, which would be within the dollar, or or pushing them to a point where they have to uh, to restructure and to give a new system, which they already have ready, waiting in the winds in the background anyway. You know, really, this this thing is really uh, put together and was um, formulated by the powers that be. So, but we know that that market the beast system is what's next. So we measure the times and we say, man, when, the, when would that system be implemented, this would have to happen. Something historic, something major, global would have to happen, you know, for America to want to try to implement a new monetary system that other people in Western society would potentially follow some of this, right? So, and of course, that market of the beast is the RFID microchip <clears throat> um, and it could be some other form of implantable device, you know, that they uh, have put together. But it is going to be something that they're going to try to insert, implant into your hand, into your forehead. We already know that that Elon Musk has the Neuralink, so he's already done these and in, implanted these in people's brains now. So we can see the writing on the wall 
for where this whole thing is starting to go. All right. But yeah, so she said that historic day. Um, so yeah, let's let's keep going with some of this this market market news. Um, take a look at this. When things get bad, man, like who's gonna stay with you, man? Like, look at this. Let's read this. This is the uh, what is the guy's name? The guy's name is Gene Sperling. He's the uh, the senior economic advisor to Joe Biden. So Mr. Sperling woke up this morning. He already knew what was going on. He saw it happening with the Japanese markets uh, on Friday. Um, he saw what happened last night. <laughs> he got up this morning when the market opened at nine thirty and put in his resignation. <laughs> like. You can't make this stuff up, man. He put in his resignation. He left Joe high and dry. You know, don't nobody know where Joe is at anyway. Who knows where Joe is at? Kamala's the one out here kind of being the face of the franchise, but she don't answer no questions on policy. So who do you think they're going to come to ask questions on policy? It's going to be him, Mr. Sperling. It's going to be the um, uh, Janet, Janet Yellen, the um, Treasury Secretary. And then you're gonna have probably guys like um, like Jerome Powell, the head, the chief of the uh, the Federal Reserve. Those are probably the people that are gonna answer most of these questions because there's nobody else to answer them. So he was like, "I'm out. Y'all can have it." And he probably that's probably was a good idea to uh, to uh, to save stress and probably save himself from uh, from unaliving himself because you know this situation is probably about to get real stressful, you know for. Uh, for Western society, right? So, but yeah, so the chief economic advisor to Joe Biden, he resigned this morning, right? So let's go back. <clears throat> now, we're measuring these times. Let's look at something. Um, man, there's so much we can really go into right now. Let's um, let's hit the second edge of 15. Uh, buh, 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 buh. Second Edges 15, we'll start at verse 14. Woe to the world and them that dwell therein, for the sword and their destruction draws nigh, and one people shall stand up and to fight against another with swords in their hands. For there shall be sedition among men and invading one another, right? So what does sedition look like? Sedition looks like when they went and they had the uh, the, cap, the riots at the Capitol, that's sedition, right? We look at uh, what's going on in the UK. That's sedition among men. That's invading one another to an extent. But you also have this on a grandiose scale where you have countries invading one another, right? I mean, you got coups being formulated in different places, Enemies putting coups in certain certain places. We're gonna look at that happening also. Like this thing is like it's it's there's so much that is going on right now. You know, if somebody wants to try to say, well, these things happen all the time, I mean, like you just don't get it. You just don't get it because it's not the fact that certain things happen all the time. It's the fact the Bible is telling you that all these things will be happening at once. And these things have, have never just all happened at once. Certain storms, uh, all these crazy earthquakes all over the place, uh, volcanic activity, whether a volcano um, uh, erupts on a regular basis or not, but just the overall activity of the world has increased over the past 10 to 15 years. Right now, it's at one of the, one of the highest points. So... We, we see all these, and, and if you if you don't know, volcanic activity is, is also goes hand in hand and ties in with um, uh, earthquake, you know, activity, seismic activity also. A lot of times you get earthquakes and then you get like a pressure release or sometimes you get the, uh, the tectonic plates that are pushing against one another and that's where you get your earthquake from. So you have the, these things kind of tie together. But... <clears throat> um, 
we start seeing the Bible saying all these things are happening. It's saying these things are happening at once. Right? Because we got to remember the end is like birthing pains. Right? So it's intense. It can't be intense birthing pains with one or two things happening. People are not really going to pay attention to it. Right? The Most High, he's doing this to show us, the ones that have been following his word, right? The prophets on the streets that have been teaching and, and all the sheep that have been keeping the law, statutes, and commandments and the faith in who the world calls Jesus Christ, right? Hamashiach, Yahawashai. It's a sign for us as we measure <clears throat> and it's also a warning. And most people are not going to take heed to that warning. It's going to be like the days of Noah. They're just going to be taken away and not understand that the flood is getting ready to come. But this flood is not going to be by water. He's going to burn a vast portion of this place up. Right? We know Babylon the Great is going to be destroyed, aka, AKA America, but other places in the, in the world are going to be destroyed also by the wars that are going to be, by the uh, World War III that's going to be taking place. So <clears throat> I say all that to say, <laughs> you know, take heed to the times and the season that you're in. Um, most people don't know what's going on in Bangladesh. Let me see if I can get this to pull up. Bangladesh. Bangladesh ultimately had a coup. Right. If anybody doesn't know what a coup is, a coup is basically um, a group of inside of a country basically overthrows the government. Um, they're the, the prime minister of Bangladesh had been the prime minister for 15 years. It's a lady. Um, she put forth some type of uh, laws and reform that the people were like, they're not having it. It has something to do with um, certain type of jobs that they had to do, things of that nature. They're like, yo, we're not going for this. The students of the country were the ones that started the protest and the riots. And not even really riots. It was really protest, right? Um so over the course of some days, uh, I, can't, I think it's been, I think it's been some weeks now, these protests have continued. And then up until the point in time where they, had, I mean, just thousands, it, it was probably 200,000 people um, in the capital city of, in, in the capital of Bangladesh. And the, uh, they basically stormed and took over the parliament. And uh, the prime minister, ultimately, she fled the country. So she left the country. Now the, the military is in, is in control of the country. Hey, man, this would be sedition among men, right? This would be uproars of the people. And this is how we measure the times by looking at the news and the information that's happening because that news is being put out there into the airwaves and things are just happening for us to be able to see it and for prophecy to fulfill itself because we know the most high's word is not going to come back void so for his uh, word not to come back void there has to be these types of seditions happening and this doesn't happen every single day what else do we have we had venezuela um i have to find an article on venezuela but we had venezuela they attempted a coup in Venezuela, and the attempted coup in Venezuela was to re remove the president, um, Nicolas Maduro. And hold on one second, Salaki. And the reason they were trying to remove him ultimately is because he has nationalized the gold. So the gold in Venezuela was nationalized. And outside entities, other countries, namely the West, can't come in and just start producing on it uh, with their um, uh, private sector companies, right? Trying to, trying to steal their oil the same way they did with Iraq, uh, uh, certain things they did in Afghanistan, Libya. You know, we can go through multiple countries and them stealing and taking resources or manipulating governments to take resources and removing the actual, the heads of state. So <clears throat> this is uh, what's been, what's, what's going on that was going on even in Venezuela, but Venezuela is getting ready to join the BRICS and the president of Venezuela has decided to allow the BRIC nations 
to actually do the um, the drilling and the development of the oil fields and the gas fields of of Venezuela. And if you don't know, Venezuela has twice the amount of oil reserves that Saudi Arabia has. Right. So it's untapped resources <clears throat> that have not been developed. This is why the West wants to get their hands on it. Um, so, yeah, so we got that, that. Then what else? We got the UK. Let me see. We get... Oh, this is uh, this is the image here of the prime minister of Venezuela getting on a, uh, um, a helicopter to be taken either to the airport or to be flown across uh, the border, probably either into India or whatever neighboring country that, you know, is kind of siding with her. So you know, that's just the image of that. But yeah, so we got that. Um, if you're not certain, or if you haven't seen what's been going on in the UK, let's get that pulled up. The UK, uh, ultimately, the people in in Britain are are fed up with the the immigrant crisis, because not just in America is there quote unquote an immigrant crisis. There is a immigrant immigrant crisis in Europe also, right? Um, and this is kind of unique because let's see if I can get this here. Because the the people ultimately are attacking, if you want to call, if you want to say minorities. Uh, you, um, it was a couple of Jakes that had been attacked in the streets. Um, they were attacking Muslims. Uh, if you know who Andrew Tate is, Andrew Tate uh, put up put up um, a post up on X, and he said that he said that he's never been um, basically uh, singled out with like racial slurs and things of that nature for you know for his skin tone for being brown. He said this is the first time in his life that that's ever happened in England. So even he. You know, being probably the most prominent person in the world from a social media standpoint, so forth, so on, is like, yo, something is is up, something's different, right? This is these uproars of the people. This is all a part of, you know, the Most High's plan. Um, let's go back into this second edge just real quick. <clears throat> Verse three. Therefore, when there shall be seen earthquakes and uproars of the people, then shalt thou well understand that the Most High spoke of these things from the days that were before thee, even from the beginning. For like as all that is made in the world hath a beginning and an end, and the end is manifest, even so the times also of the highest have plain beginnings and wonders and powerful works and endings and effects and signs. We are going to know when it is the season for the end because these particular prophecies are happening all at one point in time and we, we should be able to match this up, right? We should be able to see at the end these certain effects that are happening and these certain signs that are happening, right? Verse 7, and everyone that shall be saved, this is what you got to do to be saved, right? A lot of people out here playing games, being simple, being scoffers. Yo, hey, man, but nigga don't get it. We moving on, <laughs> you know, to, to, to quote the um, the late priest uh, Yaquab from, uh, from uh, original One West. If a nigga don't get it, we moving on. Don't nobody got time to be spinning wheels with niggas that's that's scoffing and not asking sincere questions. We just gonna leave you out there to deal with what's about to happen. And whenever you decide that you want to get some information, it's gonna be too late. Ain't nobody gonna be around to give it to you because we're gonna be taking care of our families, not trying to teach you, right? So let that be a warning. 
um, <clears throat> everyone that shall be saved and shall be able to escape by his works and by faith, whereby ye have believed, you're going to have to have, you have to have, um, have faith and works. Faith and works. Just having faith is not going to do anything for you. Faith without works is dead. And you're going to be dead. Right? Verse 8. Shall be um, shall be preserved from said perils. So if you got faith and works, you're going to be preserved from the perils that are getting ready to come onto the earth. You're going to be protected from them. The Most High is going to be your hedge of protection. And shall see my salvation in my land and within my borders, for I have sanctified them for me from the beginning. Right? So this is this is how this is going to, going to play out. Um, we go back into the second Ezra uh, 15 and 15. For the sword and their destruction draw nigh. One people shall stand up and fight against another, and swords in their hand, right? And whenever you look at these prophecies, it's it says swords, brother. Well, in the ancient world, it definitely wasn't gonna say guns, right? Whatever weaponry, whatever uh, um weaponry or uh that, that people are gonna have is just saying this in this chaos, people are gonna be fighting in the streets. It may be some knives, it could be some guns, it could be bats. Could be all that, right? But the prophets, they just they just know what they know in their time frame, and they're just saying what they know, and they're giving the understanding of what they're they're seeing from the most high. As time goes on, it's the job of another prophet to decipher that more. Right? If we be those men, that's what we do. That's what we do on the street corners, that's what we do in these classes. It's to decipher this for the people, right? So you Blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, you got to repent, keep the commandments, and have the faith so you can be saved, right? If not, you're going to get caught up in the sedition, in these weapons, in these riots, in these streets. That's what's going to happen, right? Verse 16, for there shall be sedition among men and invading one another, they shall not regard their kings nor their princes, and the course of their actions shall stand in their power. Like they don't, they're not gonna care if this is a um a politician that they run into or whose house they break into. They're not gonna care if it's a um the owner of the gas station on the corner. These people who are gonna be in these streets are not gonna care. Right, and their course and their actions, they're going to continue. It's not going to stop. Right, verse seventeen: A man shall desire to go into a city, and shall not be able. Now, what do we see here? We see all this happening, and this will be on a grandiose scale. So, what we see right now happening in the earth is a buildup. This is not even totally it. This is just beginning stages. Birthing pains kind of increasing. This is not even it in totality. You still sitting in America getting up, going to the store with no problem. But there's going to come a day where that's going to be an issue. And the things that you're seeing across the water are going to be happening right here on your doorstep. Right? So this message is for brothers and sisters here in America, a.k.a. Babylon the Great. And for brothers that are in other brothers and sisters that are in other places of the world, too. Right, it may happen sooner for you. It was a sister that commented on a post, and she's in the UK, and she said it's getting she, before a lot of the uh, messages. I think it's like on Saturday, maybe Friday or Saturday. She's like it's getting bad, and over the course of a couple of days, it was, I could see it was really getting worse. So it was confirmation from her that no, nah, this is actually happening, and it's bad out here. Right, so. You got to take heed, and 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 we're sitting right here, uh, in, in in Babylon. We should know it's going to be the worst here. It's going to be the worst here, right? Um, because at some point in time, 
We always get to this verse 17 and say that a man shall desire to go into a city and shall not be able. And the reason being is because we, we've always said there's going to be some type of like a uh, economic collapse that's going to, that's going to uh, put people in, in, in positions to where they, mo- they want to try to get to their family and they may not be able to. Mark of the Beast will be implemented restricted travel right they they got they got everybody trying to get uh gradualism is what they do so they got everybody trying to get the uh, the real ids right now what are the real ids for the real ids is like you've been able to travel state to state they've been setting this system up right because they knew that this day was going to happen they knew things were going to fall apart and they were going to have to have something in place to try to control the people monetary right monetary system and just financially i mean uh, uh monetary system and just from the standpoint of uh so like and just from the standpoint of uh controlling and keeping the quote unquote peace in the streets right um hold on give me one second so like it. Right. So these things are going to be are going to be taking place. Um, let's see. We got boom, boom, boom. If anybody doesn't, if anybody has seen, there's a hurricane uh, that has uh, been approaching um, Florida. And this hur- this hurricane is not getting a lot of attention because it, one, because there's just so much that's going on, but because it's not that strong from what they are saying. But the problem is, is that it's moving kind of slow and it's picking up a lot of water from the sea and from the from the Caribbean, right? And that water is going to be dumped somewhere and it's dumping it in Florida on the coast. Well, I think up through like the Tampa, so looking like the west western coast of Florida, of the Panhandle, right? And then this is supposed to move into Florida to central and eastern portions of South Carolina and South east of north carolina and they're saying that it could even continue to have remnants that have dumped a lot of rain on up as far as new york so you got a major storm that's under the ra- under the radar and they called it they called this storm an anomaly if you don't know what an anomaly is an anomaly is something that's out of the ordinary right it's not a normal storm it's not as strong it's kind of moving moderately, but it's going to dump, they said, some record rain, 20 to 30 inches in some places. 30 inches of rain? Can you imagine that? That's like that's three feet of rain, of water. That's crazy. So these are, these are things that, you know, that would be happening. Um, let's see here. Um, uh, Luke 21 and 25. And there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars. Um, we've had, you know, different eclipses and things that have happened. Yes, eclipses happen. But they're not happening all the time in totality with some of these other things that are happening. And they're right along with one another, right? Uh, blood moons. Uh, what, within the stars, uh, if you want to, uh, so-called meteors, you know, shooting across, uh, across the sky, there was one of those that just happened in, um, in Iran, uh, two or three nights ago, a huge meteor shot across the sky. Perfect slow-mo. I mean, just moving at the right pace so everybody can see it and they filmed it. Um, you know, and I'm like, this is these are all these things that are just going to be happening. Um, right. Uh, and upon the earth, distress of nations, rioting in the streets, sedition among men, uproars of the people, people mad at what's going on in the earth because it tells you that when the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice, but when the wicked rule, the people are in mourning. So people are pissed off in the whole world 
because the, the earth is in piss poor leadership. And the earth, by and large, is run by Western society, which would then fall onto the hands of America. And within inside of Western society, right, we know it's the so-called white men who are the Edomites in the Bible. Right? You got to piece all this stuff together. Let's, um, who's going to be in charge and running this thing whenever the end comes? For Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. Right, the Edomites are going to be running the earth when it's time for the for the world or the age, the kingdom that 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 is being run at that time to end. It's their kingdom, and Jacob, the Israelites, is the next kingdom on the earth. So you know, no, we ain't worried about. Uh, 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 Kamala Harris and and uh, and um, Donald Trump being the president. We're worried about rulership. That's what we're worried about. That's what we're focused on is the kingdom, right? Yeah, you got day-to-day -day things you do. You got to keep it balanced. When you hit these, these portions in prophecy, man, if you're a brother that's teaching, we, we should be trying to prophesy more, right? Tighten up, get the information out, measure the times, right? Repent, try to try to keep our families in order, prepare, right? Because we're trying to prepare for rulership. And, and of course, to um, for the most high to be a hedge of protection and to save us from the perils that are going to be happening. Um, let's go back over here. So we talked about the storm and last but not least, we're going to talk about Iran. But, 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 yeah, so uh -huh. y'all don't hear the baby, the baby right here. She, she got something to say. She thinks she about to be on the mic. Um, so what do we got? So Iran's attack or retaliation on however you want to view it on Israel uh, is said to be imminent. They have said to now have told the surrounding countries around them, their neighboring countries, that it's like within 24 hours. They're about seven hours ahead of us. Most of the time attacks are going to happen at nighttime. So when the sun starts to go down, you know, it's, it's probably whenever it's going to be pretty close to being a go, unless they want to surprise and hit people early in the morning and make them stay up and think about it all night long. Who knows how they want to do it? So, I, you know, t primarily, I would say the best time for them to do this, uh, two, three, four o'clock Eastern time, which would be what, pushing nine, 10, 11, you know, or maybe – Shoot, it could be six o'clock in the afternoon, which would be early, early morning, two, three o'clock in the morning on their time. So, I mean, that's just what's kind of going on with that. But these different countries, these different quote unquote Muslim countries, because we got to understand something Iran is a Muslim country, but Iran is not an Arab, an quote unquote Arab country. The Iranians are not Arabs. They're Persians, right? So although they have the same religion, and that religion really was put on them by the uh, the um, the, a the Arab conquest, is whenever though is whenever Islam was pushed onto that whole region, right? Iran is basically telling all the Muslim countries we should all be standing together under their God to protect. Palestine. And they're essentially have been calling Egypt, Jordan, and um, Egypt, Jordan, and uh, Salakia, Saudi Arabia. Basically, they've been calling them coons. You know what I'm saying? They've been calling them coons like, y'all protecting Israel. We're shooting these missiles, and y'all are shooting certain missiles down over top of your, your countries so it don't hit the people who are causing this problem 
who everybody knows is not supposed to be in that land. Right? So a big development within the last hour has been that Egypt has announced that they are refusing to join in the regional military coalition to protect Israel against attack, attack from Iran. So Egypt is saying, hey, if, if if something comes and flies across our airspace, we're not going to shoot it down. Right? We're not going to shoot it down. We're gonna we're gonna allow it to to go on the path and the course that it's going to go on. Um, Saudi Arabia has said that they will shoot down anything that comes over their airspace. And the Jordanians are scared out of their minds because they've been told that if they get involved, that they're gonna they're they're gonna feel the pain also. Is what the Iranians have told, really told everybody. So, you know, this thing is 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 heating up. Um, Russian National Security Council head uh, Sergey, uh, I think his name is Sergey uh, Shuya Shugu. I can't pronounce his name. Um, if some of y'all probably you, you don't know, one thing about me is I took Russian in college because I didn't want to take Spanish because I was trying to get done with my uh, 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 my language faster. So I got done like I think a year faster or like a semester or something faster by taking Russian versus taking Spanish. But some of these names I could probably I could pronounce. Sometimes I can I can say a couple words, but I, I don't remember much anymore. But anyway, the the, uh, the national security head, he uh, was in Iran um, this morning or sometime in the day over there, and he uh, he had a meeting. Iran is, or Russia has been said to be um, giving certain more upgraded weapons. Now, let's, I want to preface this, is that Iran, by all by everybody's understanding at this point in time, Iran's missile system systems are pretty sophisticated. They are not no slouches. And they've been providing things to the Russians in their war in Ukraine, just like the North Koreans have, been, have now been providing certain things to the Russians in the war in Ukraine. Now, the Russians are providing certain missiles that are even more technologically advanced in some aspects to Iran and very, very high quality um, electronic warfare weapons to the Iranians to jam signals and to distract uh, potential um, retaliatory strikes on their missiles that are flying over a portion of these lands, right? Um, I didn't plan on hitting this, but I'm just going to hit it real quick. Let's hit this real quick. Ezekiel. Ezekiel 38. <clears throat> you know, um, if you've been around watching and following Sakari, you know, for a while, you know, uh, we go into these. This is Ezekiel 38, Zechariah 1. Uh, we go into it pretty heavy um, because it plays out prominent within the last days. But uh, it says, Son of man, set thy face, uh, Salakia, verse 1. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, set thy face against Gog, the land of Magog, the chief prince of Meshach and Tobal, and prophesy against him. Right? So as of this day right now, this Gog, who is the chief prince of Meshach, Meshach is the ancient name of Moscow, this chief prince would be Vladimir Putin as of right now. You know, it, most I could make a change and slide him out and put somebody else in play. But as of right now, he's Gog right now, right? Uh, and then the land of Magog is what we know as the land of Russia today. Right, verse 3. And say, thus saith the Lord God, behold, I am against thee, O Gog, the chief prince of Meshach and Tobol, and I will turn thee back and put hooks into thy jaws, and I will bring thee forth and all thine army and horses and horsemen and all of them clothed with all sorts of armor 
even a great company with bucklers and shields, all of them handling swords, right? So <clears throat> we look at we look at this this verse four um, when it talks about putting hooks into thy jaws. The the former Soviet Union, we know it collapsed, right? Whenever you heard Ronald Reagan say, uh, "Mr. Gorbachev." take that wall down or whatever the case may be right that was the fall of the of the um the ussr and what ended up happening is all these countries let me see if i can find hit these maps real quick all right boom so all these uh areas the Baltic states, like all through here, uh, scroll down a little bit more. Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania, Belarus, Ukraine, Moldova. I want to say it went out as far as I don't. Slovakia was, and that was different. Romania may have been a part of it, possibly, but I think it stopped about at Moldova. Um, these areas were a part of the former Soviet Union, and they were a buffer against the rest of Europe, primarily the rest of Europe being NATO, right? So when it says that he will put hooks into thy jaws and turn thee back with an army, it's talking about going back to start reclaiming and taking over control and influence in these lands again. We look here now, Belarus, but Belarus, which means beautiful Russia, right, is already an ally of, of, of Russia. The Ukraine, of course, which is the largest country in Europe. People don't know this, but the Ukraine is the largest country in Europe. This map is not a, um, is not a, uh, a good indicator of what the size of Ukraine actually is. But Ukraine is the largest country in Europe. And this is what's now being fought over vast portion of this land coming through about like the, the eastern half down into here and into this area, which is called Crimea. So Russia basically is like they already hit Crimea. They try to slide through, take this. They got Belarus and that's their buffer to keep NATO back, which NATO said that they were not going to move closer. So now the Most High put the spirit on Gog, currently Putin, to fight back and to push back into Ukraine because they were trying to get Ukraine. NATO was trying to get U Ukraine to become a NATO member. And a lot of other things were going on also that we're not going to get into in this video, maybe another time. But anyway, so that's what's happening here in verse 4. Now, this is where it gets... This is where it gets Nice and, uh, and interesting, right? Verse 5, Persia, Ethiopia, Libya, with them, all of them with shield and helmet, right? So what is going on right here with Persia? Persia <coughs> is Iran. The ancient Persian Empire pretty much... Uh, a, a vast majority of Afghanistan and Pakistan, Turkmenistan were inside of the ancient Persian Empire portions kind of going down to here. Maybe even a little piece of what we know as India. A lot of the uh, quote unquote Indians are um, are Persians. A lot of them are. Um, and then it slid, slid in all the way up here through Iraq into Syria and into Turkey. That was the ancient Persian Empire. Right. So that's why you got the right here. This is the Persian Gulf. This body of water is the Persian Gulf. Right. It's Iran's Gulf. Right. So and then the capital, Tehran, nest, nestled up here at the top, kind of in safety, you know, with good, good land around it from uh, from an invasion, ultimately. So <clears throat> but. It said that Persia was going to be a part of this coalition that Gog, currently today, Putin, would have, right? But we're going to drop down here to verse 7. 
be thou prepared. Who's to be prepared? Gog is to be prepared. All the other countries that are in coalition with Gog should be prepared also. But Gog has to be prepared and prepare for thyself, thou and all thy company that are assembled unto thee, and be a guard unto them. So we look at what's going on with Russia and Iran, who is Persia, sitting right in Ezekiel chapter 38. We understand that the Most High said that he will put the spirit on Gog if he remains that chief prince, Vladimir Putin, to assist and to help Persia, which is Iran, right? This is how we break down scripture. This is how we look in the news and try to line things up to see if the measurement is correct or not. And if we are not correct, then we remeasure, right? But you know, through the spirit and power of the most high, uh, it definitely looks as though we are correct, right? And I say we, I just say the Israelites uh, as a whole from the understanding and breakdown because the Christian church don't break it down like this. The Christian church thinks Gog and Magog is like China or Russia and China. <laughs> a simple, simple, simple uh, reading fundamentals to tell you that that's not, it's impossible for that to be the case. But anyway, um. Yeah, so you got that. You got them supplying weapons. You got them giving uh, military counsel. Also, this is all a part of them being a a guard unto the coalition because Russia, by all indications right now, is probably the most battle-tested and hardened army in the world right now. You got some other, you got some other Hezbollah, you got Yemen, you got uh, even Hamas, some of these other, um, some of these other, what you want to call, um, proxy armies that are around. But as far as a full, a hardcore a nation, a country with this military, it's more likely it's probably Russian because nobody else has, has had really boots on the ground for an extended period of time using modern weaponry outside of Russia. The United States has been shooting missiles at Yemen and other places in, um, in Ethiopia, uh, around the Horn of Africa, other places other places in Africa, um, Afghanistan, so forth and so on, Iraq. They've been shooting missiles for the most part. They did have boots on the ground, but that's Afghanistan was 20 years, right? Mo anything that's really significant fighting against another modern military you know has not been happening ukraine is a modern military ukraine is a top 15 military in the world with the backing of nato and getting weaponry from nato ukrainian soldiers by and large were trained under the same tactics as the russians because ukraine used to be a part of russia a lot of their military equipment that they have some older stuff is russian military equipment so they are brothers um, and they understand each other, but it's also understood that Ukraine is not a slouch army by any means of the imagination. But they are definitely being run through at this point in time in the in the in the stages of military uh, action. So, um, so yes, yeah, so that's what you got going on there. Uh, and it said that this this military action is imminent. Um, I was telling you about Andrew Tate earlier. Boom, there it goes. Let's see. Uh, let's see what we have here. Okay, this is just another image of the Russian um, foreign minister or I think defense minister meeting with the heads of Iran and saying that Russia is going to get full cooperation with Iran Woo! in dealing with current regional issues. Wow. China also said that Iran has their backing. North Korea also said that uh, Iran has their backing. So everybody's coming to the aid of Iran and supporting them. And so now what happens? Uh, let's see. Let's see if I can find this. Um, uh, let me see. Supply. 
your it is. Dang. Let's see if I can find this find this article. Oh, here we go. Vladimir Putin said, we will supply arms to your enemies, to the enemies of the USA, as they supplied arms to our enemies. So now the United States, what are they going to do? They're going to come out and say, you guys can't be giving arms to the Iranians to to help fight this war against Israel. (laughs) Russia's like, you hypocrites. You have been supplying weapons to Ukraine against us. So now we're going to return the favor against you. Now you're going to have to deal with what's getting ready to happen. And it's so beautiful because we understand that to go back into the land, the land is going to be, um, the land is going to be uh, decimated in shambles, destruction from war, right? And then we would go back in with the heathen, as our servants and slaves and rebuild it back up right let me uh we're gonna read that you know someone said oh you're a liar the heathen are not going to be people slaves to the israelites Uh oh you know you gotta prove everything to simple niggas you know i ain't gonna say simple niggas just you know because sometimes some people don't know but in other times people that have seen um seen the breakdowns they just don't want to accept the breakdowns um uh wait cities my bad so like yeah, i got messages coming in all types of stuff coming in right now so like yeah. uh uh we don't go to so like, we number two Going to Isaiah 61. Not 60. Says right here, and they shall they shall Isaiah 61 and 4, and they shall rebuild the old waste. They shall raise up the former desolations, they shall repair the waste cities, the desolations of many generations. And somebody would say, see, this is gonna be many generations, but you gotta understand. The land of Israel right now is a desert. There's already been many generations that have passed in the desolations that are there right now. The original place, the actual place where the temple should be is in Tel Arad, and that place is a, is a complete desert and a desolation. And all you have are ruins from the old ancient temple. That's the actual temple of Israel. The place where you, where you have, the only place where you got the Most High's name written in Paleo-Hebrew on that temple in the world from the ancient world right so um but yeah verse four and they shall build the uh, the old waste they shall raise up the former desolations and they shall repair the waste cities and the desolations of many generations and strangers shall stand and feed your flocks who are these strangers these strangers are the other nations non-israelites Two different sets of strangers in the Bible. Sometimes Israelites are called strangers, and then the heathen are called strangers. But this right here would be a heathen that is a stranger, non-Israelite. They're going to be feeding our flocks. They're going to, and the sons of the alien, who is the alien, this is non-Israelites again in this context. These aliens shall be your plowmen and your vine dressers, right? So whenever this rebuilding happens, they're going to be the ones in the field. Um, they're going to be the ones in the field. Uh, 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 Salakia. They're going to be the ones in the field running the agriculture and picking the crops. The same way we did for them. They're going to be, have to do it for us. Right? And, but ye shall be named priests of the Lord. Men shall call you the ministers of God. You shall eat the riches of the Gentile. What is, what is the riches of the Gentiles? Their wealth. We're going to take all of their wealth from them and put them to work in the fields. And they're going to be the ones to rebuild and be the construction workers to build up our kingdom. 
right? And in their glory, ye shall boast yourselves. So what does that mean? <laughs> hey, man, can you imagine like, so, uh, like uh, a heathen having a, a big block of gold and you melt that thing down and put that, put a, put a, a Cuban chain around your neck from that block of gold. It's like, what, a whole kilo on your neck. That's you boasting in their glory, <laughs> right? Verse verse seven, this is how good the most high is. For your shame, you shall have double, and for confusion, they shall rejoice in their, per in their portion. Therefore, in their land, they shall possess the double, Everlasting joy shall be unto them. Who's the them? This is the Israelites, right? For our shame, the things that we've gone through as a people, we're going to get double. For confusion, right? We're going to rejoice in the portions that we get. Therefore, in their land, whose land? Israel's land, they shall possess to double. We're going to, the most high is going to give us. Anything um, that you can imagine that this place is, if you think America is such a great place and so much wealth, we're going to have double this amount in the kingdom to come if you keep the faith and keep the commandments, right? So uh, verse 8, for the Lord, for the Lord love judgment, and he said, for I, the Lord, love judgment. I hate burnt, a robbery for burnt offering. And I will direct their work in truth. What's the truth? The laws, the commandments, that's the truth. And I will make an everlasting covenant with them. But who's this everlasting covenant being made with? The Israelites, right? As pursuant to Hebrews 8 and 8 and uh, Jeremiah 31. So, yeah. I mean, this is it. I mean, we, let's go some more, man. It's just so beautiful, man. Verse 9. And their seed shall be known among the Gentiles. Now, who are, these, who are these Gentiles? These Gentiles are non-Israelites, right? Gentiles are just means nations, but in this context, these are talking about non-Israelites and we're in kingdom connotation. And in the kingdom, the Israelites are not going to be doing the works of servants in the kingdom, right? But our children are going to be known among the other nations and their offspring among the people. All they that see them shall acknowledge them. When your child, a two-year-old baby, a one-year-old, they got that waddle walk. That one, one, one and a half year old got that little waddle walk. But that baby come waddle walking through down the street with mama and daddy. The nations are like, ooh, that's the Israelite. Step aside, right? <laughs> Is this shit? You look at. Blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans halfway do this now. A, a, a white a white woman got a got a ding on buggy in the store, and she coming down the aisle, and you coming down the aisle, and she looking at you like you better move. That's what this gonna be like. It's just a it's gonna be a role reversal. Everything's gonna be set back in order, right? Let me see. Uh, Um, when the righteous are in rulership, the people rejoice. Uh, Proverbs 29 and 2, when the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. See, right now there's not righteous rulership on the earth, which is why you're seeing all this stuff that's happening, right? But when the wicked beareth rule, the people mourn. People are going to be pissed off and they're in mourning and they're not happy whenever the wicked are in rulership. And the Bible tells us that the Edomites are the most wicked and are the wicked of the earth and are in control of the earth at the end, which is why all this thing has come to a, a breaking point and it's happening, right? So, um, so yeah, that's what's going on there with Putin. Let's see. See, let's see what else is popping in these headlines before we jump off of here. Um, Sky News journalists forced uh, off air by a mass Muslim protest. Hey, man. Shit is getting deeper in the UK, man. I, at some point in time, well, they did say that they were talking about having um, uh, lockdowns and curfews, 
to try to get everything under control. The regular police has not been able to control everything. And the only the only option you're going to have next is going to be a martial law and put the military on the ground. And this is not in one city. Now this is in Birmingham. You got multiple cities across the UK that this is that these riots and protests are are happening. And at this point in time right now, what they what they're not showing you is is that as the people of England, quote unquote, if you want to say, you know, white folks, right? Edomites, the red people right here. He's got a nice reddish tint on his face that you can see. You may not be able to see it. But as they started attacking the minorities, the minorities started fighting back. So now you got these two groups in different cities fighting back against one another all over the place. Um, yeah, Russia announces full cooperation. Wow. High yield credit spreads are blowing up, uh, so we may be in the credit crisis. You know, I don't, I don't really have time to go into all the uh, the aspects of what's going on with inside of the financial system, but understand this: that there are multiple inflated bubbles and values that are out there that are not worth what they're worth. Houses, uh, um, uh, credit card interest rates shouldn't be as high as what they are. They're crazy through the roof because of inflation. But homes are overpriced. Cars are overpriced. Food is overpriced. Clothes, and so forth and so on, right? And all these things are a problem. It looks like the credit portion of this thing is starting to uh, rear its, uh, its ugly head. But we, we understand these things have to take place for things to get better, which is uh, um, a righteous rulership on the earth. Um. Woo, the Fed will not be cutting rates. The Fed will be doing an emergency emergency quantitative easing. So what does that mean? This is this is uh this page right here. Um this is what his thoughts are. This is my thoughts on this too. As far as the first half of this, the the Federal Reserve basically has two options. If they cut rates, <laughs> If they cut rates, it's probably going to crush the dollar. If they leave things the way it is, it's going to crush the stock market. They basically have to decide which one they're going to kind of let go. So I don't know. The quantitative quantitative easing basically saying that they're going to print money to inject into the um, into the bond markets because Japan basically was selling. Um, U.S. Treasuries to prop up their currency that was crashing. So in turn, it's starting to slide over and into our markets to an extent, right? So they're saying that they're going to quantitative um, ease, ultimately have to print money to try to prop up some of this stuff. I don't think they're going to be able to do this, but we're not going to get into that right now. But I don't think they're going to be able to do this. I could be wrong. You know, who knows? They've been doing it for all these years now. The, tr- the debt is at $35 trillion. They might just add to it. Who knows? But that's somebody's thoughts on there. Um, oh, the UK. Well, now this was something that was interesting. The UK has suspended arms exports licenses to Israel, but they also had put sanctions on certain arms exports to Israel last week. About a week, week and a half ago. Right after that happens, then the UK goes into freaking chaos with riots. I'm going to tell you, there's no coincidences, right? The, the, the place that we know is Israel today and that government and that ruling party, ruling people that are there currently right now, they have a certain MO. This is an MO of them is to destabilize places right along with America because America and Israel are one and the same, really. If America decides not to send weapons to Israel because Iran is going to threaten the bases that are in the Middle East, you never know. This could be a start. Next thing you know, you start seeing uprises in America, and it could be because the same people got their hands in it because people are not trying to help them. 
So they're they're retaliating back on those people. Who knows? Uh, crazy raping a minor. No more, no more profane person than Esau. The, the goddamn on white man, woman, and child, right? The wicked and the devils in the Bible. Uh, let's see here. Um, what else we got? Numerous emergency crews, a uh, plane crash in Jamestown, New York. Trump saying the stock market is going to go down if he loses. This is this a plane? What plane is that? Oh, that's a private jet. Wow. Good gracious. Who was on that plane? That's going to be interesting to figure out who was on that. That just don't even seem like, you know, they put certain things on the on the on the news. Well, I'm not gonna say the news. This is we're on alternative. You know, we get stuff faster dealing with Twitter. Although you do need to make sure you vet your stuff on Twitter or on X. But I would, uh, I would want to see what this is. Um, war is imminent. Refuses the coalition. So yeah, so pretty much the same. Uh, if Islam is the problem, why are the United Arab Emirates, Qatar, and Bahrain, et cetera, are so safe. Bad government is the problem, not Islam. Okay. Um, Egypt says it will not participate in Salakia. And he's saying this because of what's going on in uh, in the UK right now. That's, that's why he's making that statement, saying, look how safe these places are, and they're run by, by Islam. So that's why he's making that statement. <clears throat> Um, he just said, the, yeah, so we, we got the same, same messages that's really going on now. Um, yeah, yeah, there you go. The puppet master, uh, keep going from there. Uh, oh yeah. North Korea deployed 250, uh, missile launchers onto their border with, uh, South Korea. So, hey man, they getting they self prepared just in case something kind of pop off. They want to make sure that they can, uh, protect themselves you know, either with a first strike or, you know, just retaliatory. Um, BlackRock, Fidelity, Grayscale, and MicroStrategy have not sold their Bitcoin despite the market crash because they knew the crash was going to happen. They bought up everybody else's Bitcoin as it was crashing. And now people are going to be priced out of it pretty much. This is, um, man, I wish I could go back to a lot of posts that I put up um, some months back. I said that they were going to do a rug pull on the crypto markets. Um, but this looks like that rug pull. So now all that wealth from crypt, from uh, Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies is all pouring into these bigger companies. Um, something else that I uh, was kind of talking about before is that even with inside of the banking system, they're trying to get the smaller banks to crash and crumble so the bigger banks can take it over, the Bank of America, the J.P. Morgan, and so forth and so on. They're trying to consolidate this wealth and take the wealth back from the people. When the new system is put in place, all this wealth is going to be put onto a blockchain where ultimately they're going to try to put individuals on that blockchain also. And then they're going to allow artificial intelligence, from my viewpoint, AI, to monitor and run that blockchain. That's my that's my my understanding of it. You know, whether it plays out that way or not, who knows? But that's what I see with inside of the system that they're going to put together, that that's what they would want to do. Um, what else we got here? Oh, hey, don't forget about them Houthis. If you don't know nothing about the Houthis, Yemen, Yemen was in the Civil War. Part of their uh, country is run by who they call the Houthis. The Houthis are a pretty, uh, pretty strong group of, of uh, militants that formulated like a little government on the western side of, I think like, yeah, like the central to west side of uh, Yemen. And they have been trying to stand 10 toes down to help the Palestinians shooting missiles, but they just shot down another uh, milit uh, U.S. Uh, Reaper drone 
So I think that's the seventh drone. I think those drones are like $35 million a piece. It's like the seventh one that they've shot down. So, hey, don't let these dang on sandals fool you. They know what they're doing, right? And they got a whole blockade going on in the Red Sea to where, you know, ships dealing with the United States or uh, Israel or anybody who is in coalition with them uh, are not able to get those goods to their countries by normal means. They're having to pay absorbent prices to reroute them and go a different direction. So, um, okay, this was this was Bangladesh. Yeah, this is Bangladesh again. And let's see. Israel sees $26 million in Palestinian tax funds. What else is new? Why did he meet with Charles Schwab? Uh, I, who knows? I mean, they all they all in this in some way or form together when it comes down. What they got going on in the West is their own internal civil war. So who knows? Um, hey, I would tell you to us, uh, if you want to know a little bit about you know, just to know some things about financial markets or whatever the case may be. I think it's interesting to see this um, as it's happening through prophecy, just to kind of understand what's happening. And I use it as a gauge of measurement myself. I used to trade. I don't trade anymore, but I still follow a lot of these guys just to be able to have an understanding and be able to see whatever certain crashes or things should be possibly happening. So, um, you know, think uh, you can follow that guy right there. Um, we went from a soft landing to no landing to crash landing. Yep. Uh, everybody's been calling on their citizens to leave Lebanon. Whenever when a country start telling their citizens and uh, and uh, diplomats to leave countries, that means that war is pretty much imminent to break out. Everybody's been giving each other enough time to get their people out before things start to pop off. Go Ravens. Boom, boom. Also go Ravens. Also go Panthers. I know. I know. I get it. Uh, let's see. Okay, whatever. Um, I think that's it, man. That's about all. But, you know, wanted to get on and... And... Uh, See if I could go through any of these things, these current events that are happening right now. What is this? Oh, snap. A significant area of underground substance. Hmm. This in China? Yeah. Some type of construction work and it caved in. Wow. That's crazy. Um. The youth is wild. Iran alerted pilots to GPS jamming in its airspace as it did before um, the 13th, April 13th attack. So when they the attack last time, they let the pilots know about GPS jamming. I think that's about it, man. United States is sending more militias. The United States has sent so many ships into the area to try. They're they're expecting hundreds, if not thousands, of missiles to go in the direction of Israel. Yeah, what a time to be alive. Um, let's see here. What else we got? Nicholas, Nicholas Maduro celebrating his victory and uh, and the fact that they ain't they ain't uh. They ain't kill him and get him out of the country. Uh, whatever. That's it, man. So, man, hey, man, if you got questions or comments, concerns, uh, you know, you can definitely put in the, or put the comments in the comments, duh. But leave comments if you have any questions. Uh, you can also uh, follow me on on uh, Twitter, of course, X, formerly known as Twitter, right here at the bottom. Oh, let me take this 
take her off so you can see. I don't know if it's going to show it or not. It might show it. Uh, no, it's not showing. Let me move this to the side. My bad. Let's see if I can. If you do this, there we go. Right at the bottom, if you see down here, you can follow me on uh, on X at Don Juan Yashirala or Officer Q. You can also go into IG, Dawad underscore Yashirala. Um, same thing for Facebook. And of course, make sure to tap in and subscribe to uh, Sakari Baltimore YouTube channel. Uh, it's the Kari Baltimore IG channel. Um, and, you know, if you want to help the camp out, you know, with travel, you know, different equipment, cameras, tripods, signs, you know, we uh, we definitely appreciate it. We got some stuff we need to get done here in, uh, in, in Be More. We also got the Virginia Brothers Fast and Furious working hard to, uh, to get themselves prepared and together. Uh, so, you know, we'll have to get some things for them also. But, you know, if it's if it's on your spirit, you can definitely send it to the Cash App, Dollar Signs, Sakari Baltimore. But if not, it doesn't cost anything to like, share, and subscribe to this video. And we appreciate all the support. So with that, we give all praise and honor and glory to the Most High God, Yahweh. This is about Shemi Shai. Say, uh, uh, watch and pray, keep the faith, and uh, Shalom.